There is another technology called gene set enrichment analysis. Uh, and, uh, and what it says here, it permits uh, Conic to measure and uh, understand connectivity among, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, this is a slide, I should say, really chemicals here. It's, this slide is brought in from another presentation of engineered nanomaterials, and this is why it says here. But, uh, but it's the same principle anyway. So, um, so um, uh, the gene set enrichment analysis um, operates in a way that it gives um, uh, a gene a score uh, uh, if it belongs to a certain or, or a pathway, or, or an ontology gets a score, uh, essentially, and it begins with sorting all these genes from those which are at the highest differential expression all the way to those who have the lowest acceptable differential expression, uh, for example, twofold changed. And, uh, and by this way, and then, 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 then you, 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 you get a way, you get, you get scores for, for, for all the genes that are measured relative ontologies, for example. <coughs> and, um, and then this, uh, this forms a pattern. And uh, if you randomize 10,000 times uh, all the analysis and you compare the actual results uh, to that, then you, you can actually have very powerful statistics here. And anyway, you do get a score. Um, you get you get a sorting enrichment analysis score, and and uh, this actually then can be uh, coupled to to large collections. For example, the uh, connectivity map, which is uh, referred to here, the connectivity map. This is from the connectivity map, and, uh, and then then uh, this connectivity map contains something like thirteen hundred um, uh, drug-like small molecules. Uh, and microarray data on that, and gene expression data, and you can do one experiment yourself, and you can have your 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 analysis made, make a gene set enrichment analysis, and then compare to whether you have a positive score uh, to some of the agents which are already in that database, the connectivity map, or 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 reverse to to that. So so that's a way to uh, to. Um, group agents and group chemicals and that's that's very important in toxigenomics that uh, that you can do that type of um, uh, analysis and uh, I usually use the term pattern recognition yeah, uh, from from measuring many things you do get a pattern and uh, then you can compare the pattern for a particular chemical to those patterns which are gathered in, in databases of other chemicals and you can see if they operate and, and, and in a similar manner, possibly, and you get hints and ideas and hypotheses on the toxicity pathway and so forth. A tool that that our uh, lab at Karolinska has used a lot is a commercial tool called the Ingenuity Pathway Analysis. Um, uh, so this is um, you need to have a license to do that, but it's also you know, also a very valuable tool. And, uh, and you can see here that it has many applications in there. You visualize molecular networks very elegantly with this tool. And uh, uh, it can analyze many types of data. And, uh, and this has been built, I think it's actually been sold to another company recently that I can't remember the name of, but, it, but it's still called the Ingenuity Pathway Analysis Tool. And uh, I think this uh, this um, uh, web address can tell you a lot more. But I think we're up to uh, close to three and a half million literature reference finding. A lot of this is, is uh, <clears throat> text mining. Uh, a lot of all, um, a lot of parts, various databases differ here. Um, I, but if I do recall right, there's a lot of text mining behind the uh, Ingenuity Pathway um, uh, uh, database. Yeah, and you can see that there are many, many couplings here of, of the information that when you get your gene list or your specific set of differentially expressed genes to analyze, then, then uh, this, um, uh, this tool, this database and this tool can, can make molecular networks as implied here. And uh, it also has a specific uh, toxicity function um, that, that, that is valuable for the toxicology so that you can link differential expressed genes to uh, toxicity endpoints. Uh, finally, I'd just like to uh, uh, um, 
mention uh, before summarizing, and in this is very basic introduction to toxic genomics uh, on this uh, 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 database. Uh, Incromap is a software tool that uh, uses open source uh, uh, databases uh, that couples to them, uh, and uh, and um, uh, we are very interested with um, uh, different combining different omics uh, within the Toxbank and Serat project. So uh, so um, so this is a um, uh, a tool that we're we're interested in to uh, to advertise and. Uh, and this slides is a bit busy, uh, but what is shown here essentially that is an example for epidermal growth factor receptor where uh, transcript data is gathered here. Uh, there's also uh, proteomic data here. Uh, there are differential expression levels. There could be uh, even epigenetics data here uh, related to DNA methylation and their association to microRNA. So variety types of information uh, can be coupled here uh, and that of course is then uh, relevant very much to, to the idea of Toxbank and, and the Serac project to integrate various types of data. Uh, so, um, so I think that's, uh, and it's going to be, uh, we, we, we also um, have a data warehouse in Toxbank that you hear from other tutorials, and uh, the IncroMap uh, will be uh, is compatible with the data file formats that that we use in the data warehouse. So, uh, so we will be seeing as the project moves on further, um, um, likely a, a lot of application of the IncroMap in, in in the work. So, um, uh, this is um, uh, I think was probably something like a. In 20, 25 minutes or so, or maybe the time went longer. I cannot say that now, but uh, but an, an introduction to the to toxic genomics that I that I hope that you found useful. Those of you who stayed with me for this time, uh, I'm just ending here uh, with uh, some pretty obvious statements, maybe from this, and that is I'll just read them out for you. Uh, the analysis of toxicological data uh, using the technologies and systems biology, including omics analysis, uh, uh, will absolutely transform toxicology, and and uh, uh, and that's absolutely ongoing as go well into a, a bioinformatics-driven and database-dependent science, uh, and uh, the Toxbank project is is very much exactly on. On those lines, how can we support the scientists in the Serat project, and, and and how can we uh, collect all the data? That, that is a very important part of of um, uh, Toxbank work, and uh, and bioinformatics is um, incre will be increasingly used, and um, understanding results in databases will be increasingly used throughout the toxicology. Field, so so I think we're we're right on target of important um, missions to do. Um, uh, secondly, here the omics analysis field has matured very much during uh, during uh, the last decade, and it is a reliable and less costly discipline today. And I think that's very important to state. And as you heard me say over and over, the the transcriptomics uh, analyzing data on the RNA level. Has been the driver for for ongoing developments of, of other omics data types. Um, omics generally in toxic genomics now in the context of toxicology provide information for hypothesis generation naturally. So if you analyze something very very broadly, uh, you do get ideas about connections that was maybe not known, and uh, so you get you get ideas about mechanisms and you get patterns. And patterns uh, uh, makes it possible to associate your particular chemical uh, to other chemicals uh, with this field. And uh, just to say the final then is that I do, I, I'm a great believer in uh, toxic genomic. And I think it has great potential for, for helping uh, defining uh, uh, toxicity pathways, if we like that term. Uh, that, that is a discussion by itself, whether is something like a toxicity pathway, or that's just an altered normal pathway. And, uh, and anyway, to to provide us ideas of the mood of action and help to define the, the 
adverse outcome pathways, which uh, if you go back to an earlier slide then, then um, uh, spans uh, the, the whole uh, scenario of activities from, from the molecular initiating event and potentially up to the population level of human exposures. And uh, I phrased here particularly that uh, it's not only for chemicals in cosmetics or so forth, it's environmental exposures generally. Uh, uh, and this broadens um, the perspective of toxic genomics from, from chemicals as I see it. So, so I'll, I'll stop there and, and um, I hope that uh, you have something out of this uh, presentation and wish all of you who follow this uh, at some point of time a good luck in your toxic genomics works. Thank you.